Recently, Vladimir Putin visited the Arctic archipelago as part of Russia's efforts to reaffirm Russia's claim upon most of the Arctic. There was also an Arctic forum held to discuss the geopolitical future of the Arctic, and most countries bordering the Arctic were at the forum. The Arctic is rich in hydrocarbon and mineral resources like gold, copper, uranium, and even diamond. As the Arctic sheets continue to melt and break away, the countries bordering the Arctic are reevaluating their Arctic interests. Iceland, Norway, Denmark, United States, Russia, and even Canada are all claiming regions of the Arctic, and some of these Arctic regions they're claiming to own overlap each other. This map provides a very good visual representation of the various claims each country has, and as you could see, there's a disputed territory between Russia and Norway. In addition to that disputed territory, Russia is also claiming the center of the Arctic or the North Pole. They are the only countries out there, out of all the other countries, to claim the center of the Arctic or the North Pole. Russia claims to own this territory by virtue of the Russian continental shelf, which goes into the heart of the Arctic and even encompasses the North Pole. No other country has used this argument to claim any land or water outside their protected state territory except Russia, so Russia is truly one of a kind. Russia is claiming that everything within their continental shelf is part of their exclusive economic zone, so they're claiming to control the trading routes and borders of the Arctic. In international law, normally a country's exclusive economic zone is 200 nautical miles away from the country's coastline. A nautical mile, by the way, is determined by measuring the circumference of the Earth and is equal to one minute of latitude. It's a little bit longer than a regular mile. Anyway, Russia is claiming to have an exclusive economic zone far beyond what international law normally permits. In response to Russia claiming most of the Arctic through their continental shelf, international lawyers in Norway and Canada are looking to make similar claims upon the Arctic, but that would cause even more problems since various continental shelves also overlap. The country in the best geopolitical position to negotiate and make claims upon the Arctic is by far Russia, though. Russia has the most military bases. In 2014, Russia performed the largest military games or war games that they've ever done since the fall of the Soviet Union inside the Arctic. In response, Norway did the exact same thing. Russia also has settlements bordering the Arctic within Siberia. There are Russians who actually live and work in places closest to the Arctic. Also, Russia has done the most scientific expeditions in the Arctic. In fact, in 2007, a Russian scientific expedition team planted a titanium Russian flag at the seabed of the North Pole. Later, Russian politicians began calling the Arctic Sea the Russian Sea. If you look at Russia's government website describing the Arctic mineral resources, for example, you'll see that the Russian government calls the Arctic Sea the Russian Sea. Meanwhile, the only country out of all the countries bordering the Arctic that seem to be cautious of Russia is Norway and Iceland, as those countries have made the Arctic publicly their top geopolitical issue. From an objective viewpoint, and this is the opinion that I hold, it appears that Russia is slowly taking over the Arctic. Russians strike me as the aggressors in this situation, especially since they're using their military for a lot of these expeditions and claiming land and territories that are so far away from what is already internationally recognized. I mean, they're claiming the North Pole, for goodness sakes. Russia is slowly chipping away the, at the international law set up by the countries who are bordering the Arctic, including Russia, so they're breaking their own previous agreements. Russians are not negotiating for more areas, they're just slowly taking it over. And in Norway's perspective, Russia playing war games in the Arctic is a clear display of aggression. But clearly, this is a multifaceted issue. To a Russian, I imagine they think that since Russia has settlements and bases so close to the Arctic, a lot of the Arctic belongs to Russia. But even if we give them that, that still doesn't explain why they think it's okay to just claim the center of the Arctic or the North Pole. Like, they're just claiming it as their own, as if we're living in the colonial age of discovery. No other country would claim to own something that's outside their own territory just because it belongs to the continental shift, like Russia does. I'll end off this video by saying this. When I went to an event hosted by Canadian conservative Andrew Scheer, one of my friends asked him, do you have a plan for the Arctic? To summarize, Scheer basically said we need more bases, more settlements, and more people up in the northern part of Canada to combat Russia's influence. And he's right. If Canadians want to combat Russia's influence over the Arctic, we need to set up military bases, we need to set up settlements, we need to have people live there. We also need to sit down at the negotiation table and make deals with the Russians. But remember, this is the Russians we're talking about. This is a nuclear powerhouse with a calculative leader who's a former KGB spy as president. We have to tread carefully if we're going to tread at all. But at least the conservative political candidates in the conservative party are talking about this huge geopolitical issue. So thank you, Andrew Scheer, for answering my friend's question and making this priority one of your issues. Let's hope we handle this issue with the care it deserves. I'm Jay Faza from the Rebel.media. If you enjoyed my exploration of the Arctic issue, like and subscribe to the Rebel.media.